folks, Math Accelerated Dragon. I'm trying to explain to you a new game. Well, it's not new, it's, a, it's kind of an old game, but it's the, um, the granddaddy game of deck builders. It's called Dominion. It, um, it is the basis for pretty much every deck builder you're ever going to play. And if you don't know what I mean by deck builder, what I mean is that everybody starts with the same hand. Um, you start off in this particular game with seven copper and three estates, and the estates are basically blockers that get in your way. So if you were to draw your hand and you have an estate, it takes in the place of a copper, and you can't do a buy. So this game takes place over rounds, which really takes a round. During your turn, you have one action turn, and you have one buy phase. So what you do is, on your first turn, you would draw five cards. Well, let's mix these up a little bit, just so I can get a randomness in here. And on your five cards, one, two, three, four, five, you'll end up with coppers and estates in your hands, usually. And this means that I've ended up with the ability to buy three points worth of cards. So three gold, or three copper anyway, gives me three copper to be able to purchase cards. And all these cards have costs at the bottom, at the bottoms of what they do. And um, if, it's, if it's five, then it costs five, and it's three, it costs three. So um, the idea of this game is that out of the, out of the jobs, or I think there's 28 jobs in the game, or cards that are available, or styles of cards, and like this is a festival, and um, there'll be a stack of you know eight to eight plus cards in here. Eight is the minimum for two-player game, so there'll be eight plus however many people are playing, eight, nine, ten, or whatever, and then they'll be stacked up, and um, there'll be ten of them will be out, and the, other, the rest of them will stay in the box. So the game will change depending on which jobs you pick. Now the game will trigger, the game end will trigger when three of the stacks have been depleted. So once three of them are gone, end game triggers, and all of these cards have abilities that will help you in the game. So because you only have one, um, one buy and one action per game or per turn, you can get cards that will uh, kind of alter that. So like this festival card, it costs five to buy, but it gives you um, plus two actions and plus one buy, and then two coins as well. So when you play it, you'll get an extra buy, so you can buy twice, and then two more action cards that you can play. So if you had festival and festival and festival, you could lay a bunch of them and get a bunch of cards. But you know, there's also ones that'll give you, like a smithy will give you extra cards in your hand, but no extra actions. So together, you can get extra actions, extra cards, and play a bunch of cards out of your hand if you want, and then get a bunch of, bunch of coins. The um, treasure-wise, the coppers can be um, upgraded by different cards. There's mines and there's money lenders and stuff that can scrap cards and trash cards and, and do all kinds of interesting things to your hand to be able to upgrade them from copper to things like silver. And then from silver it can go to gold, and then there, the values of those go up. So a copper's worth one point, a silver's worth two, and then a gold's worth three for buying power purposes. But the end goal is that you're trying to have the most victory points at the end. And to do that, you'll buy these green cards here, like estates and duchies and provinces, that have victory points on them. The drawback is, is that when you buy them and you put them in your hand, they're taking the space of something. So, I mean, you'd much rather buy, pick up a gold out of your, out of your, out of your um, hand, or library rather than an estate, because the estate's not, it gives you points at the end, but it's just taking a slot when you're, when you're first um, getting going. So there's a there's a, a point in there that um, you have to switch off from you know making your hand better to um, starting to gather victory points. So but and everybody's going to tell you it's a different time. So I'm not going to even try to get into the strategy of that. There's also a couple of um, there's a there's a witch card in there that allow you to throw curses and curses will go into other people's hands and give you negative points. Not to mention that it also takes a space in their hand, so that's a that's a bonus if you have a bunch of curses. It can be a bother. So, but then there's also cards that allow you to trash cards. So, trashing cards would be um, throwing them completely out. Like the the, um, the money lender in here has the ability to trash a copper, and then it gives you three points of buying power. Well, coincidentally, the silver costs three. So you could trash a copper and then gain a silver if you wanted to. Or if there was a card that you specifically wanted, you could use the three points from the scrapping the copper to do something else. So it's a deck builder. It's not a bad, bad game. It has lots of replayability because of the jobs that you can intermix. And some of the jobs are, I think, more useful than others. But um, it all depends on what categories are out and, and what pair together. Um, there's a couple of cards in there that I, I have never really found a good use for, but other people have, so, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all in how you play. 
So it's not a bad, it's not a bad deck builder. And once you, once this kind of game gets, you you get the understanding of this kind of game, then you you're fine for a lot of any any game that somebody calls a deck builder. This is kind of what it's based on. Is starting off with a group of cards. Everybody starts with the same thing, and then you progress from there. You you buy the cards that you want. They buy the cards that they want, and then your hand changes as you go. The benefit of this kind of game is that it's not a um, it's a it's a, a cooperative deck buyer. So all of the cards that are available are available to everybody. So anybody can buy whatever card they want. So it's not it's not um, biased towards I you know I have my own Dominion game and you have your own Dominion game kind of thing. To where you know I've spent more money so I can have a better game than you. So it's a it's a nice game to be able to have in your house and in your in your. Um, uh, whatever you keep your games in, your, your cabinet of games, to be able to break out and play with average players. I would rate this about the same complexity as something like Catan or Ticket to Ride or any of those other games that are kind of like in the, the mid-range, you know, they're not terribly complex kind of games. So yeah, if you're a, if you're a, a fan of trying to learn some, some games but haven't quite got into it, this is right in the wheelhouse of being able to start, start up your um, gaming life. So this is a this is a pretty good deck builder, and I I and I, I've got nothing really bad to say about it. It's a pretty good deck builder. It's got lots of expansions. If you ever get bored, I doubt you're going to get bored right away because this this game you'll play 50, 60 times before you start to have like a permanent strategy on what you're going to do, and then uh, then if you get an expansion, then it'll all change. So that's kind of cool. All right. So that's Dominion. That was a Rio Grande, by the way. Rio Grande games are definitely in my wheelhouse for likability. All right, that's all. Thanks. Bye.